Good morning, church. Happy Sunday. Would you take a moment, if you're able to, and stand with me if you are joining us online? We are so full of faith that God is not a respecter of time or place, that what He's doing in our house of revival, He is doing in your house of revival right now. As we step into today's service, we were gathering together as a staff team to pray into and just join in with our agreement on what Jesus is gonna do in our midst this morning. And one of our team has her mother visiting all the way from England, and she shared with us this radical testimony that happened yesterday in the healing rooms in this very sanctuary. Some of you are so godly, you're already celebrating before. I can hear the claps before you know. Teresa, if you're near me, would you come up to the stage right now? As Teresa makes her way up to the stage, how many of you have had the joy of joining us in our healing rooms on Saturdays? Beautiful, amazing, I'm so glad. If you are online or you're in the room and you haven't yet, experienced healing rooms, you need to join us on Saturday mornings. There is such incredible testimonies and stories of what Jesus is doing in our midst. And we have just, I believe, the best team and crew that are praying and leading the way and pioneering for us. Would you just welcome Teresa with me? She is such a gift to our body. Many of you will know her daughter, Shelter, who is a real intercessor and such a gift to us in this body. Teresa, firstly, we honored that you're joining us for the first time. Teresa, will you let us know what Jesus did in your life yesterday in the healing rooms? I came to the healing rooms with my daughter, to Shelter. And when Matthew was praying to me with some high school students, I felt... Um, waves going all up the way and I felt really the presence of Jesus and my eye, I had problems with my eye, my left eye was going blind, the consultant they said I was going blind and I was on eye drops, it cleared because every morning when I wake up it's a blood shot and grease all the time from yesterday Nothing, it's clear, then it's well healed. I've got rheumatoid arthritis, which has affected all my joints. My knees, I've had operations on them, and it's much better. But my shoulder and my whole arm, my right arm, I couldn't use it. I always ask my children to open even water bottles for me. I can't hold. But last night I was holding my own water bottle and my shoulder can move. And no more pain. <laughs> and no more pain in such a way that my son is also having problems. I've decided to buy a ticket for him to come here. <laughs> So thank you, thank you. We are so thank you to you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Teresa was telling us this morning that often she can tell because in her left eye every morning it's absolutely bloodshot and glazed over. And this morning she got to wake up for the first time with her eye completely clear, no glazing, exactly the same as her right eye. We know that Jesus is our healer. If you have any physical issues in your body right now, as we step into worship, would you just, especially if there's an issue in your eye or your shoulder, would you place your hand on your eye or your shoulder right now? We're not gonna get any man or woman to lay hands on you. The presence of God is in the room and Jesus is the healer. Teresa, would you take a bold step and just pray over us in the room right now and watching online that what Jesus did to you, He would begin to move and do to others. I thank you, Lord. I welcome the presence of God to all, to all of you and all those who are suffering like I was suffering. I wish you, you will have all that grace and go away with the blessing of Jesus and feeling pain-free like I am doing today. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus, we thank you that you are healer. 
as we step into worship right now, just begin to test out your shoulder or your eye. If there are any other issues, God not just doesn't wanna heal the one aspect like Teresa, she got a full body healing. She said she felt currents just pulsating of the presence of God and heat throughout her body right now. Jesus is healing. Before we say a word of worship or a, a, a word of prayer, that's who He is, that's His nature. And so just begin to test out your body during the service. And then near the end, we're gonna, we're gonna ask, uh, we're gonna pray and then we're gonna ask you to test out your body once more and we're gonna celebrate and see what Jesus does in the room, amen? Okay, let's step into worshiping our good God.
Jesus. Let's just give Jesus a big shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love how Libby started off this service. I loved hearing from Teresa, who is the mom of one of our amazing staff members, Shelter. And as we were worshiping, I felt stirred by the fact that I believe the Lord is wanting to mark entire families with divine health and divine healing. As we started off 2024, Stephen, I pray and get words over the year. And a word I felt Him give me for our family was divine healing. And I, I started to think uh, about how I had the privilege of marrying into a family that walk in divine health. And as I was worshiping, I started to think about Steve's mom, uh, Jane Moore, and the fact that she got a hold of a truth that God is the God who heals today. And she stood for her family and she took risks and she has seen radical signs and wonders. And she got on the phone to my husband, now husband, at the time college student <laughs> and said, son, you can do the same thing. You can do it too. And tell testimony after testimony and said, you can do it too. It took one person to say, this is who we are as a family. And as a result of her obedience and her commitment, we have seen radical signs and wonders follow this family. The first person Steve prayed for had a back muscle shoot out under his hand after he prayed seven times because his mum told him it would happen. And eventually he got healed. Our niece was, told, was pronounced dead in the womb after multiple scans and she was resurrected in the womb and she's now six years old. Steve had torn his muscle 20, 26 times. 26 times, dislocated his shoulder. Was told there was nothing doctors could do. Went to a Jesus Culture conference and he got radically healed. Our children walk in the mirac miraculous. Steve's sister, when I think about the sixth or seventh person she prayed for was a little boy who would drown. She prayed for him and he was raised from the dead. She is a teacher in BCS and she sees signs and wonders she teaches her kids. There's something about one woman that said, my family will be marked by miracles. <laughs> Teresa, I wanna honour you as the woman. Shelter said, Shelter came to know Jesus to walk because this one woman said, this is whom my Jesus is and my family are gonna walk like this. See, whether you are the only one in your family or you're together with your whole family today, I believe God is wanting to mark your family from the youngest to the oldest. Our one-year-old baby sees miracles. She prayed, she, she blew a raspberry at somebody who had 25 years of pain and the pain disappeared when he, she blew a raspberry. I, I don't get it. There's one woman saying, this is our destiny. This is our inheritance and sons and daughters of the King of Kings. And I wanna pray right now that the Lord would mark you and your family, your legacy and those to come with miraculous healing power. That 2024 would be a year where you not only walk in divine healing, but God marks your family with divine health. See, Jesus said, we will do what He has done and we will do greater things than these. There is a promise of divine health if we will step into it as a church. I believe what the Bible says. It is time, if you wanna just raise your hands right now, if you're like, I'm standing for my family. I believe this word, that I would be a family, a people that are marked by divine health and healing. God, I thank you across this place and online that you would mark us, God, to be families. Families marked by signs and wonders. You say that signs and wonders will follow those who believe. God, I thank you for the mothers and the fathers and the grandmothers and the grandfathers that have said this is our inheritance. This is our destiny. And right now, God, I pray you would back them up like you backed up Jane Moore and she has a family and grandchildren that walk in the supernatural, that you would do the same thing with every person listening to this online, listening to this in the room, listening to this back. The fire of God is about to come on some of your hands. So if you start to feel the fire of God, we're kicking off Randy Clark Greek right now and radical miracles are about to happen in this room and online through your hands through this week. God, I thank you for fire, healing fire. Thank you, Jesus. More, 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 more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Revelation 19.10, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Not the testimony of Steve, not the testimony of Ruth, the testimony of Jesus. I don't know how to heal the sick. I don't know how to see healing through my hands, but I do know how to hang out with the one who does. There was a time that when I would hear a testimony, I would interpret it as a reminder of what's not happening in my life until finally the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Steve, testimonies were never meant to be a reminder of what's not happening in your life. They're a promise of what will happen in your life. And regardless of what your experience has been with praying for the sick or seeing God move, He is who He says He is. And so right now, if you need a miracle in your body, whether you're online or in the room right now, if you have any pain in your neck, you have pain, back pain, knee pain, you have arthritis, you have carpal tunnel, you have problem with your shoulder, problem with your eyes, if you have a terminal condition right now, if you're online, go ahead and put those things in the chat that you need pray for, uh, prayer for. But if you need a miracle in your body, I just want you to raise your hand in the room right now, real quick. And if you're around these people, I just want you to lay hands on them. Just lay a hand on them right there. And you can just ask them real quick, hey, what do, you, what do you need a miracle for? Don't tell them the full medical history, just tell them my shoulder, my knee, my back. And then we're gonna pray. Father, I thank you for healing coming in right now. Father, we command all pain to go. Father, we release full mobility. Father, we curse any infirmity. We command all sickness out right now. All pain go, all backs be made straight, all necks be healed and loosened right now. Command depression to leave off right now in Jesus' name. All pain go right now. Thank you, God. And then go ahead and just start testing out your body. Start, start moving around. Start trying to do something that you couldn't do before. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And then you know, if you notice any change in your body, real quick, just go ahead and just wave both hands above your head right now. If you notice any change in your body and just Come keep on, waving in the room. Jesus. Come on over here, over here. If you're online, just put in the chat the percentage of improvement right there. Come on, Jesus, that's amazing. Thank you, God. You know, the degree in which you celebrate the testimony today will determine the breakthrough you see tomorrow. Thankfulness and gratitude always leads to increase in the kingdom. And so can we just give Jesus a, a thank you and a shout of praise real quick? That's just amazing. And then we just wanna encourage you just to keep testing out your body to see if you have any improvement. And then if you, if you experience healing, come and, come and tell one of the staff, one of the pastors up in the service, we'd love to hear uh, what he's done. But come on, Jesus. Can we just give the worship band a round of applause? It's so, so amazing. And then why don't you welcome uh, the wonderful Jamila Page as she comes up and shares. Wow, wow. I love it. Let's give it up for the worship team as well one more time. Led us so beautifully. As you're making your way to your seat, if you have a seat next to you, can you lift your hand just demonstrating how many are available in case there's anyone who's in the room and doesn't have a seat yet. Thank you. And online, you have the best seat. <laughs> you didn't have to fight for it. You chose it. Um, yeah, thank you guys. This next set of folks, um, I am really excited to get to honor because there are folks in the room who are here for the very first time. And if that's you, would you stand? Would you stand if you are visiting us for the very first time? Yes, I love it. Look at this. Welcome. We're so happy. Hello, welcome. So good to see you. You know, I'd even like to welcome our online first time guests. If you're a first time guest in the chat, I'd love for you to put that you are here for the first time. Um, this couple over here, would you stand, sir? You, you waved at me. 
Yes, you in the hat. Yes, sir. Um, I just bless you. I felt that the Lord told me I would have a word for someone who stood as a first time guest. And immediately you waved at me and I felt the Lord saying, hello, welcome home. I'm not telling you to move here, but I am telling you that you are a reflection of how the family of God spans the globe and that we welcome you as family. Um, I bless your family's legacy. I bless the will of God in your life, your finances. I just feel a special grace on you in 2024 to see and be an example of God's goodness. So I bless you today. Thank you for coming. First time guests, would you raise your hand? One more time, let us see you because our ushers have cards to give you if you haven't received it and they'll come right up and give that to you. And then at the end of the service, head over to what we call our South Lobby because our team would love to minister to you. Welcome, welcome. And now I have the awesome honor of welcoming up Jen for a family announcement. Morning, y'all. Um, this is David Hislop. Give it up for David Hislop. He is so wonderful. If you don't know him, it's probably because he secretly stays in the background for most of his, always right there. yes, always in position. He has been playing guitar on this worship team for 10 years. Can you give it up for David? So he's really amazing. And him and his wife, Jenny, are just really steadfast and huge pillars of our community. And they're moving to Nashville. So will you extend your hand to David? He's gonna stay part of the family, just relocating to dominate another part of the world. So Lord, we bless the Hislops. We thank you for the kingdom carriers that they are, Lord. We thank you for the steadfastness, the joyfulness, the excellence, the heart of worship that they carry. And we bless this move. We bless this relocation, this replanting as part of our extended family, Lord. And we just pray for traveling mercies and blessing upon blessing for their family. We thank you and we honor him for the faithfulness to you and to your house. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody said, amen. We love you. Thank you. Amen. And now church news. Bless you, David. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Sweatshirt Sunday on Church <laughs> News. Was this on purpose? Uh, kind of. <laughs> the magic of movie making. We're glad you're here this morning. We are. <laughs> and we're ready for Church News. <laughs> Join our lovely Gail Spooner on February 3rd for her Art Sozo workshop. Art Sozo is a gentle process of learning how to process your emotions and encounter God as you paint. Now, don't worry, you don't have to be an artist, you don't have to have experience, like maybe you just know how to use crayons. Gail's gonna take care of all of that. If you'd like to find out more, go to Bethel.com forward slash church news. I get tons of fabulous feedback about our pre-marriage class with Jenna and Aaron Zint. And so if you're thinking about getting married or engaged, I highly recommend this class for, for you. Uh, it's about eight weeks long. It starts February 4th. It's $40 a couple. It's That's peanuts compared to what you're going to be getting. So we'd invite you to come and to join them and just to build a strong foundation in Christ with one another with fabulous principles as you begin a lifetime covenant together. Here's your opportunity to get free estate planning advice. On February 6th and 8th, there's an estate planning seminar and you'll have the opportunity to have your will or trust prepared for you at no cost. Wow. Like, do you have yours done? Let's not talk about that now. <laughs> okay. Sounds like I need more information. <laughs> <laughs> for more information, guess where you go? Uh, Bethel dot com forward slash church news you got it uh, <laughs> well we got to wrap this up because i'm sweating in our sweatshirts <laughs> we have a bethel leaders summit coming up in march and it's a gathering of leaders of all generations just to encounter the lord together and then also to talk and minister to each other about what we think the lord is up to on the earth both in local congregations and then nationally as well so we invite you to register at bethel.com forward slash events this time so we we yeah. flipped it around a little bit made it unusual <laughs> there and to get your opportunity to be with us during this conference we look forward to you joining us in the season well thank you for joining us for this week's church news this is the conclusion of sweatshirt sunday Absolutely. But something I w just want to say to you as congregation, you know way more great stuff than just what we can talk about in church news is happening. So please make sure you're regularly heading to Bethel.com to find out all the incredible things we have going on. All right. Good morning. It's, um, it's amazing uh, that, you know, Dan is going to be preaching tonight and we just saw his face up there. Um, 
it, it always feels awkward if you see yourself and then you come on the stage. So just, we love you, Dan. <laughs> but um, it's offering time. Can we all stand in this place? Um, before we read offering reading number, God is in a good mood. So I don't know which one that one is. But before we read that, um, I just wanted to share a, a quick testimony um, that is really big for our family. I, I feel like God, God is really about to um, move in families this year. And um, we, we had one, our, we have three kids, our oldest, Zion, who is, um, we, we love our boy, Kobe, our second, and he's also our middle child, which I was the middle child, wild child. And um, our third is Zara. Um, and, you know, we've been parenting Zaya six years old, and we're figuring out how to parent them. Zaya, I would say it's been pretty smooth. Um, because he's a rule follower. And so, you know, I kind of tell him what to do. And he's like, all right, if you can make it logical to me, I get it. Zara, she can do no wrong. And Kobe, Kobe has been one that I am discovering and figuring out and has taught me so much about patience and understanding and creativity. And my, my son, Kobe, um, we love him so much. There's a really cool moment um, um, when he was having a fit. And um, basically, a fit is this moment that a child happens where they choose to not respond to anything you say, and there's no solution on earth that they can have to get them out of that. And, and there's about um, a lot of those in the day that you lose count of. And there's this moment that happened this past week where um, Kobe was having this, this fit, and, and he just stopped all of a sudden. And, and Chantel, my wife, um, looked over at him and she was like, is everything okay? Cause he just stopped all of a sudden. And he said, Jesus asked me to stop. <laughs> Praise God. Amazing. I, I would have never imagined or even prayed to ask God to talk to my son about his fits. And, and the reason I wanted to share that is because I think sometimes we come with our fish and loaves. Oh, we got someone coming up right now. Altar call right now. <laughs> but we, we, we come with our, our fish and loaves and we forget that Jesus is really good at being God. And I think this morning as we're giving into the offering, I want us to go in with that thought that he is really good at being who he is. And so even with your fishes and your loaves, or fish and loaves, um, let's just declare offering reading number God is in a good mood. I am powerful and what I believe changes the world. So today I declare God is in a good mood. He loves me all the time. Nothing can separate me from his love. Jesus' blood paid for everything. I will tell nations of what he has done. I am important. How he made me is amazing. I was designed for worship. My mouth establishes praise to silence the enemy. Everywhere I go becomes a perfect health zone. And with God, nothing is impossible. Amen, amen. We're gonna have ushers passing the baskets and you can go ahead and grab your seats. And we're gonna welcome up Pastor Dan. Hello. Thanks. You guys look terrific. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to be with you. I forgot I had declared today sweatshirt, sweatshirt Sunday several weeks ago when we filmed that. So today's flannel Sunday. We'll do that instead. And, uh, but there was a moment in eight o'clock service when I was filming, I filmed in this shirt when we did video announcements too. And I was just thinking, dear, dear God, please don't let this be the day that I'm wearing this shirt because that would be super <laughs> awkward. So I feel like the Lord's already taken care of me. We're gonna have a great day. I have great faith already. So uh, we've just been having a tremendous time as uh, a church. And we had our fast that just ended uh, last Sunday, I think. Right? Yeah, but last Sunday, beautiful time of praying together, being together regularly. And because it's a corporate fast, the freedom to talk about the fast with each other, I think was very freeing. Instead of sometimes we try to keep, you know, fasting like when we're doing it alone, kind of low key. But I think it was beautiful to be able to do it as a community. Some of you enjoyed, especially the prayer meetings we had here. Every Sunday morning was beautiful. And um, 
We'd love to do some more prayer in the Holy Week or something like that. We're going to try to rig some things up. But it did cause me to realize that there's a whole lot of prayer and worship happening that you may or may not know about already. And uh, I'll mention two of them that aren't on Bethel.com. Hopefully they'll pop up this week. But uh, tomorrow night is worship rooms uh, from 8 to 10, right over in the, in the great room as well. This is where just one of our incredible worship leaders is just, is just feasting on the presence of the Lord. And we get to be in the room as well, enjoying them. So healing rooms has been an important, sorry, not uh, worship rooms has been a really key part of our life, especially before COVID. And so it's wonderful to kind of see that beginning to blossom again. We're looking forward to what God's doing. We have regular prayer, seven o'clock on Wednesday, seven to eight, Wednesday morning in the great room, uh, eight to nine on Thursday morning, especially for government in the great room as well. Friday night, we have a prayer meeting from seven to nine that meets in the upper room that's just up these back stairways as well. And so there's lots of opportunities to get together and pray. And if you're missing that, there's oodles of opportunities for you already just to kind of press into and uh, as we kind of prepare for other stuff. And also some other things that are happening. We, Randy Clark's this week. I think the evening, evenings are open. Whenever Randy comes in the meetings themselves, there's a deposit, but you do find in our own house all over that there is just an increase of miracle power and the supernatural as well. So I'd encourage you just to be pressing in. If you're able to come to the evening meetings, if you need a miracle in your body, I believe those are free. Bring fro- friends, uh, folks that maybe don't know the Lord to you know, those evening meetings. I think it's Thursday. It's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That'd be great. And then also next Sunday is Mission Sunday as we talk about uh, the opportunities God's given us around the globe. And so we'll begin to talk about um, preparing our offerings. Many of us, especially us members, we, we tithe 10% of our income, but then we give above of that into offerings as well. Missions is one place that we do that. And so our missions team has great plans for next Sunday and the Sunday after. It's going to be two Sundays, kind of bookending it, just like we did at the fast. And I think they're going to have some, um, here on this campus, they're going to have some uh, information about unreached people groups. That's going to be very exciting, but not just unreached people groups with a small impact or with, with very little Christian witness, but with zero Christian witness. Like no, they, there's nobody that knows the name of Jesus or names the names of Jesus in these particular places amongst these people group. And so give us an opportunity to pray for them, to think about them, about how the gospel could come and touch their, um, each of those particular places as well. Uh, there's a, I think there's like, well, they'll, they'll tell you, but there's like, uh, okay, I can't, I don't actually know the fact well enough to tell you, but there's a whole lot of people yes. who've never heard of the name. That's what, that's what you're going to hear about next, next Sunday. It'd be great. Um, and then as well, we've just had a really exciting gift come into our Rise and Build project. I'm uh, super excited. I have a new building. This will be my third building since being on staff at Bethel Church. Was, I was there at Bocelli, then we moved into this one. Uh, it was too small right away. We had to go to double services right away. I pray that same blessing on the next place as well. Do you? You're like, oh yeah, yeah. So uh, we just had a beautiful gift by a congregation, Life Church 7, up in Richland, Washington. And um, they're, they're a place where they've just been connected to us for a long time. We've had kind of leaders head up there. They head down here as well. But they did us a tremendously beautiful honor. And so they, um, uh, their, their pastor, Wes, was just praying for us, praying for our building project and, pr- and investing uh, in his prayer life. And he said that he heard the cries of our intercessors in, in, in asking God to rally the finances for our building. And so that's spooky right? And it's kind of super spooky and supernatural and amazing that, you know, God lets our intercessors' prayers be known to somebody else, but I'm all for it, you know, especially when it's like, it motivates, a, you know, a beautiful gift. And so they began to put in their heart and they did like our mission Sunday where they said, hey, next week, come prepared because we're going to take a big offering for Bethel's building. And this congregation, I think of about 800, 600 to 800 or so, they heard a number from the Lord and they came and give, gave graciously. They gave this church a $100,000 gift. Yeah. This is a congregation. Of, like I said, I, you know, 700, 800, 900 people and that are doing a great work for God, a great church. Just so blessed to be connected with them. And then so blessed by the way they honor us. Their, their elders wrote us this gorgeous letter. Each of them hand, had a hand signature on it at the end. It was just such a tremendous gift to us. And, and uh, we, we need this big building. They're partly, they, I think they described us as being catalytic to some of the things that they were doing in their house, which is such a joy. Like, I know for us that we're supposed to have a movement and, and be in a, a movement that is, is meaningful on the earth. But one of my favorite parts about 
us is in that movement sense is when we're catalytic to other movements. When we know other people are doing really cool, amazing things for the Lord and that we were able to go, hey, the Lord's taught us this. We learned it this way. We're getting this particular insight. That ability to just kind of lend our strength to other, other movements, just as the vineyard lent its strength to us, just as Morningstar lent its strength to us, just as Toronto lent its strength to us, is a beautiful thing the Lord's doing going forward. So gorgeous offering. And then I got to tell you a great story about Ben and Heather because this just mwah, speaks of the quality of people they are. So Ben and Heather, who are, they're mostly often at this first service and not at this service, but you know, you know, all know Ben and Heather, right? Yeah. So amazing. Heather's uh, taken a bigger role in leading our, our women along with Havilah. But they had, um, they were so excited to give this gorgeous letter and this check to us that they wanted, they wanted to bring it on Tuesday morning to celebrate with our leadership team. And just to just drop this heavy bomb of awesomeness right in our, in our laps and to celebrate together. So they are, they've been ministering and then they're supposed to fly out of somewhere in Washington and fly down here. They'd been upgraded all the way. So they were looking forward to a little relaxation in the airport lounge. And then, you know, whatever business class, I don't know what it is into Reading. Maybe it means you don't sit by the bathroom, right? I don't know what, I don't know what business class is here. You know, so... <laughs> I don't know. If you've flown into Reading, if you're online, you, you understand what I'm saying. So um, maybe they give you extra earmuffs for this. <laughs> Here's another bag of pretzels for you, Dan. Anyway, so. <laughs> but they were looking forward to that. And, um, but they got canceled. So they decided they were, Ben and Heather, our own pastors, were so excited to get back to celebrate with us immediately this gorgeous letter, this, the gorgeous heart, and this gorgeous gift that they rented an SUV and drove through last Monday's snowstorm all the way from Washington at night, white knuckling it. Ben said, just like tons of stress. Heather's like, should we stop at this place? Should we stop here? Should we stop? Ben's like, no, it's too late for that, baby. We're going. So uh, if, if you're a couple, you've been in those spots before, but you know, thank God for you know, traveling mercies and angels protecting you. But they got in about 1.30, went to bed about two. And then they're up the next morning just with just gigantic smiles on their faces. Just like, we got something to show you. But it just speaks of the, the quality Ben and Heather that they're like, driving back just to be, celebrate with us right after the fact to honor the gift that was given so beautifully. And Heather said something, she's like, once I see that, once I see God give a $100,000 gift to this, I, this, this 40 million we're waiting on for in, into June, she's like, God's got us. God's got this for us as well. And so I'm excited for that. Pray with us. We, we are praying for 40 million by June. Again, there's a prophetic word about that. And again, we know in the room or online, some of you have been given the gift of generosity finances come easily to you and flow through your hands to important purposes. And I think this house is doing a great work for God. I'd recommend you, if you've been delaying, write that $5 million check or that $10 million check. I'm not lying. There's people that can write those checks and uh, they watch us online too as well. So I'm looking at you. All right. So we're doing cool stuff. We're going to do cool stuff. All right. Hey, listen, and so I, as I was thinking about uh, preaching this today, I was like, Lord, this is kind of a simple concept. I don't want to, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, you'd like to preach something that's not, that's kind of novel and new. But so several things happened during the week that kind of helped me. Uh, Rebecca Dominguez, who leads our Rise and Build, she had gone to uh, speak to, uh, go to an event uh, at, uh, where, with the partners who help us with our fundraising and was impacted beautifully there. And then if I remember to say it, both Haley and Chris had a beautiful word that kind of landed in my heart, like, yeah, this is what I should be preaching. And as well, the Lord gave me a sense that in the soon and also in the years ahead that this message will be helpful if you come across it on YouTube or other places that you find it. Because I think it's a pretty important message. And this is the message. And this is the title is that God is not everyone's father. <sighs> Dan, they said this was basic. I think this is basic. We're going to talk about this and unpack it. But in, in scripture, I'm going to lay a biblical foundation that says scripture actually teaches God is everyone's father and also teaches God's not everyone's father. And then I think in you and I, we have to have a real clear understanding of this. It'll impact the way we live, the way we, what we give ourselves to. It'll impact the way we share our faith, the way we honor uh, uh, the Lord. And it'll um, impact the way that we see the idols of this, of this nation, the things that are, that are grasping for their heart. And so let me just pray together and then we'll jump in. Father, I do ask for an anointing again uh, this third time that again, your power would fall, that there would be a capacity to be transformed and elevated. And, and yet at the same time, our foundations would go deep from our time together. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So 
Rebecca was at this event and she got to hear from David Kinneman, who's the CEO of the Barna Group, which is a polling and research, Christian evangelical polling and research group that's been doing a great work for God for many, many years. And he said something, he had some tremendously interesting revelation there from the things that he was discovering from polling people. And one of the profound things he said is that he thinks that in his polling, it reveals that this generation is a skeptical one, but one that's also spiritually open. That you and I are sharing our faith and evangelizing and we are living the gospel in a, amongst a, a skeptical, and all you have to do is look at how skeptical we are about politics or news or conspiracy theories and all these different things that abound, like skepticism about organized religion or I'm just doing my own thing with Jesus at home and, and, and um, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm an evangelical Christian, but I actually don't go anywhere and, you know, I don't watch TV, I don't watch online, nothing, I got no connection. So there's a skepticism that feels really true, but the weird part is that there's an openness as well. That's the part, like, is that really true? And he asked this, these four questions, and the people, uh, 71% of the people said yes to either four or three of these questions. Really basic, but he's trying to provide a, found, a foundation for the church to realize that we are actually, when you and I get nutted up thinking, ah, oh, everybody's skeptical and, and not interested, is actually there's a deep hunger for spiritual things as well, but there's also a deep counterfeit that's being offered by, by the world. So these are the four things just real quickly. They, they, would, they answered yes, like one, it's possible that there might be a spiritual dimension to life, like that, you know, how, how low a bar could you set? But they set it pretty low. It's possible there might be a spiritual dimension. The second one is that they would define these folks, would you define yourself as exploring or curious about your spiritual side? Be like, yeah, I'm interested in that. The third one would be um, they have a positive attitude towards the, even just the idea of spirituality. Like, I don't think it's negative or stupid, but actually, like, in a sense, I think we're spiritual people and we should be having a spiritual side. And number four, they believe that there is a God or a higher power. And so this was his, re, this were the questions he asked that led him to say, I think that we are in a skeptical but spiritually open generation. And he has lots of good ideas about how to address this. Ideas I'll leave for him for his book or if you want to find his teaching online about these particular things. And they have to do with uh, sharing our own faith journeys. They have to do with um, uh, really uh, appreciating and listening deeply and caring about the, the, the faith journeys of people who haven't yet to put their faith in Jesus Christ. And so these are really helpful and beautiful. But again, they're not necessarily what I want to preach about today. Um, what, what I want to cover is, is to build in your, your hearts and your heads a very clear theological foundation about God as Father. And I'm going to start by uh, proving to you from Scripture that God is everybody's Father. And then I'm going to prove the exact opposite from Scripture. So uh, you're going to find that a lot of the big things in, in God are actually take this. They take re these really big ideas. They're like, God has to say, I'm one, and there's only one of me in the Old Testament. And then in the New Testament, with hints in the Old Testament, we go, by the way, I am one and, and I'm three persons eternally co-equal and co-existent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so we get this idea that the scripture is absolutely God's word to us. It's also God's word through human beings in particular context and place. And so lots of times the scripture takes very big ideas and uh, even the idea of temptation, if I remember, I'll, we'll, take, we'll just briefly look at it as we go through. And we have to kind of hold both of them in tension. And this is one of those spots where we actually get to the truth by saying, affirming that both of these are real, not trying to cancel them out, but by looking at actually how they do fundamentally work together. Does that part make sense? Okay. So um, right now, we'll talk about that God's everyone's father. Let's start in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created mankind, humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So in this sense, you see that God is the origin, the designer, the purposeful designer, the creator God. And in this way, he is absolutely everyone's father and is that he is the wellspring, the fountain, and the originator and the designer of what it is to be human. And, you know, it's not my sermon for today, but you see, this is one of the passages, if you're wondering, like, why the church takes a, such a stand firm on confusion around transgenderism and multiple genders, these sorts of things, is because we believe that this, even in the Old Testament, this was said, and then affirmed by Christ in the New Testament, that God made us male and female. And that this was part of original creation and design, and furthermore, that this actually is the best representation. Male and female in covenant relationship is actually what it means to, be the, to bear the image of God. It's right there in the text. Made them in their image, male and female, he created them. 
And then you get these ideas of marriage that are woven in there as well. But this is why the, the church, we, we, we end up going not just this uh, libertarian, hey, whatever you want, but we realize these things actually have dramatic impact on people's uh, psyche, their personhood, their self-understanding. Well, again, that's not today's sermon. That was just a little freebie there. But I wanted to point out is that he is, he is the origin of all of us. Um, and this is before you know, the fall we see that his intention. Acts chapter 17, verse 28 through 29, Paul's talking to a bunch of Gentiles and he's making a connection with them by quoting their own poets. And he affirms that God's the father of everyone here. He says, for in him, speaking about God, we live and move and have our being. And as some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. And therefore, since we are God's offspring, he affirms it, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skills. It's a powerful, like just that Genesis verse with this verse and this idea of not, 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 God's not in the image of human design and skill. There's probably a pretty powerful preach if we just took those two sermons, those two verses. That's not today's message either. Uh, so <laughs> I'm trying to again just get you to get this other fundamental idea. Um, Ephesians 3, 14 through 15. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. And so you get this important idea that God's father and the, and the fact that every human family derives its name from God, that he, he gives identity. He speaks to them about who they are. He's given them life and breath. And as it says in the other scripture, in him we live and move and have our being. But then even more personally in Luke chapter 12, verses six and seven, you get just a wonderful verse about God's attentiveness and I think that speaks to him being the father of everyone. He's, these are the words of Jesus. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? There hadn't been inflation yet in Jesus' time. So it's, I'm not sure how many two sparrows, how much two sparrows go for, for right now. Uh, yet not one of them, these sparrows, is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs on your head. So he goes from sparrows which you think he's going to talk about feathers, but he actually puts it right to the, the human audience. Not, indeed, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. It's always comforting to me if the Lord like, Papa, thank you that I'm, I'm worth more than many, many sparrows. I think, ever seen a bunch of sparrows fly around? Am I worth that many sparrows, Lord? Or <laughs> But again, you get his point. It's like God's invested. He sees you. He's interested. He knows the number of, of hairs on your head as well. And so in this sense, we see the attentiveness of a father saying, I know me or not, I let the rain fall on the just and the unjust. And I see you. Whether you recognize me as father or not, I see you. You matter. You matter. And then in Romans chapter 5, 20 through 21, God is, as father of everyone, provides grace that we might respond to his invitation to come home. But where sin increased, the father ran away? No. Where sin increased, grace increased all the more. His undeserved love for people and his power to transform them increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So God's father of even the unbeliever in the sense of like, hey, I'm, I'm actually providing grace so that you can respond to my call. Like, and if you run deep into sin, I run deep after you with deep grace to call you home. And so this, in other ways, God is everybody's father. And the final one here, we could probably find other verses. The final one I want to highlight for you is Luke chapter 15, verse 20. This gorgeous story of the prodigal son whom again, prodigal means wasteful. So it could be the wasteful son. It could also mean, the, the story is often called the prodigal father by people in kind of an irony way because prodigal doesn't mean right, run away. It, it means wasteful. And they're saying the way he lavished honor on this son at the beginning of his journey and the return of his journey was in, is incredible and wasteful. Anyway, different preach. <laughs> so... We get this idea that God certainly, when folks have wandered from God's, God's house, that he's like, I go to the edge of the property and I look for them. So he got up and he went, uh, um, so he got up and went to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, was filled with compassion for him and ran to his son and he threw his arms around him and kissed him. And so if you've been, if you can think along with me as we're trying to say, because my point, God's everyone's father and he's not everyone's father, then how, in what ways from these scriptures we've just looked at, is he everyone's father? 
And we would say that he's, he's the origin, designer, the, and the wellspring of life. Uh, the, and, and so that he's absolutely their, their father and that he originated them. Uh, he personally knows in the sense that he cares about the number of head, hairs on their head. There's an affectionate heart of the father looking out for both the saved and the lost. And then there's also power. He gives power called grace to actually enable people to respond to his call to come home. And so we see at least, you know, three ways. And then the last one would be longing. So it's true that God's everybody's father and that he's in the origin, that he longs for them to come home. He provides power for them to do so. And that he personally sees and cares about every human being. And these, this is beautiful and an important message for you and I as we share our faith. And not only as we share our faith, but we think about our identity. All of these things remain true for believers, but they're not. They, but but there's more true for believers that 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 aren't that isn't true for unbelievers. And now I want to take you through the scriptures that kind of talk about how God's not everybody's father. In, Gen, in John chapter one verse twelve, John says, "Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God." So again, you're not, you're not just born a human and you have the right to be called a child of God. Yes, made by him. Yes, he longs for you to come home. Yes, he loves you and sees you, but you don't have the right to be called a children of God, a child of God, until what in the scripture? You believe and receive. You believe and receive. That's a fancy pants way of saying faith. <laughs> you put trust, you put faith in Jesus. And that's the way that God Again, is you come into his fathering in a whole different way than somebody who is on the run from God. The next scripture is very much like it in Galatians chapter three, verses 26 and then four, four through seven. It says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God. We become children of God through Christ Jesus. And it says through faith. But when the set time had fully come, God sent a son born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption as sonship. Because you are his sons, because you're his sons, God sent his spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit that cries out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's children. Since you are his children, God has also made you an heir. So again, we see in this passage that we are made children of God by faith and then a spirit of adoption comes into us by which we cry out, Abba, like dad, you're my dad, you're my father, you're the center, you're, you, you are invested in me, you're not just my creator, you don't just long for me to come home, but you are hopelessly desiring of an intimate connection with me, to establish me, to bring me good things, great things. Um, and to transform me into your likeness. Another passage that just, again, emphasizes that God's not everybody's father is 1 John chapter 2, 29 through, um, verse 29 and then 3, 2. If you know that he, and that he is God, if you know that God is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is who we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. So this idea, again, that the world can't recognize us as God's kids because the world doesn't recognize him as father. And so the world actually, you know, is like, is, is our children, but estranged children, we would see, who are unable to actually see who the, the, who the, the beautiful church is, the, 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 those that have given their, their hearts to Christ who live for him. And so they, they look diminishing on us. They look disrespectfully on us. They, they look arrogantly over us. And yet he's like, oh, they, they can't, they don't know that we're children of God because they don't actually recognize him as father. Yeah. It's the fundamental broken spot in their understanding of who they are and who God is. And then probably the most profound one, and it's just interesting one, is a longer conversation Jesus has with the religious leaders in Israel at the time who were um, seeking to you know, persecute him and were teaching against him. And this is John 8, 39 through 44. And uh, this is the, the religious leaders start. Abraham is our father, they answered. And then Jesus speaks. If you were Abraham's children, Jesus said, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth 
that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. He's not everybody's father. You are doing the works of your own father. (sighs) Well, we are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. Let's let that sink in. If God were your father, you would love me. For I have come here from God. I have not come of my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you were unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. Okay, there's my case that God's not everybody's father. Because Jesus himself actually says, your daddy's the devil. (laughs) To some people. Actually, makes it super clear. Your daddy's the devil. You don't think your dad, your dad isn't who you think it is. And so these are bedrock ideas that you and I have to kind of carry in our inmost being. And now let's talk about how to put them together. Because we have already said that, yes, God's everybody's father, and that he's the origin, that he is attentive and full of love. He has, gives power to respond to his call of love, and that he longs for them to come home. But that you and I have access to God as father. We have a whole like world opens up to us. And I would say that I wanted to preach this to you because I think some of us are still living with only those benefits, the early benefits that all all humans get and have not moved into the benefits that the Lord himself actually provides when he is our father, when we've put our trust in him, we've put our faith in him. And you could probably think with me about what some of those benefits are um, of of knowing God as Abba. Uh, First one I could think of is intimacy. The world, though God made him, he longs for them. They don't call on him. There's no, there's very little conversation. There's sometimes God help, you know, or that sort of deal. There, there is some conversation going on. But you and I, we've been invited in this place of intimacy. Bill taught powerfully last week or the week before about how the, the Holy Spirit has come to indwell us forever. And uh, that Jesus Christ said he'd be with us forever, even unto the ends of the age, as we bring the gospel and, and invite people into the kingdom. And so this... Uh, This idea of having an ongoing relationship with the Lord that we have a right to is super beautiful and super important. And you and I should be accessing that. And listen, I, you know, I, 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 didn't, I, don't, I don't regularly hear from the Lord all the time. He doesn't tell me what pants to put on in the morning, perhaps because I don't ask, but the, uh, you know, you know or where to shop, that sort of deal. I don't want to act like I've got a, you know, a, a one-line communication, a bat phone that I, you know, he and I are in constant conversation, but he and I are dialoguing throughout the day, and I am listening for his smarter, kinder, more truthful voice than my own inner dialogue. And I am wondering, like, Papa, what do you think about that before I try to ask, like, what do I think about that? And so this kind of dialogue of intimacy is really important. And when you have a dialogue with intimacy with your heavenly father, other things become available, which is gratitude. The world, you know, even though God's their father, they don't quite know who to be grateful to. I want to thank the universe, you know, <laughs> that sort of stuff. Uh, they just don't, they don't quite know that we bless this. You know, God, you know we, we, we bless you. Where's that blessing come from? Who actually can produce a blessing like that? Uh, you know, like, so the world doesn't quite know, but you and I know, like, we can actually live in gratitude because of this father-son, father-daughter relationship. I'll say it again. We live in daily gratitude because of this intimate connection of father-son, father-daughter. The other place would be in our dependence. Like you and I know when he's our father that we are dependent on him and we like it that way. We're in, interdependent you know, with him. God's not dependent on us for, for much except that which he's entrusted us to do. But again, we, are, we sit down at meals and we're aware this food has come from God. Like I might've bought it with my paycheck. It might've been some other farmer. I, it might've you know, ended up at Safeway and I, you know, I picked it up. But somehow or another, God's graciousness has come to me in this available food. And I thank you as the giver of every good gift. So that, that dependence There, the dependence to say, Papa, I need forgiveness even as I forgive my sins. And then in the Lord's Prayer as well, the dependence to say, please lead me into victory over over my own flesh and blood and victory over evil as well. That this this intimacy is this source of gratitude and dependence that we can have with the Lord. 
And then the last one I'll just mention to you, and I'm sure you could come up with, actually I have two more that you can come up with. One is hope. It's one thing to say that God made me, but God has plans for me that through resurrection and through, he has plans for me both in this life and in the next life. That this, the, he didn't just save me to get me into heaven, but he has saved me to transform me. You and I actually live with a glorious hope of the resurrection and connection with him in this life and the next, the life to come. Um, I've, you know, you know the meaning of life. Listen, if you know God as Father, you know the meaning of life. Yes. It's not a mystery to you. It's just like you know, it's like I live in a world God created uh, that, that has fallen, but he's called us home. He rescued me through the death and resurrection of his son and he's established me so that in this life and in the next, I'm going to, I'm going to become like him and be about his business uh, you know, uh, into eternity. Like you and I know the secret of life. And when we act like we don't or we're not sure, I'm like, what are, you, what are we doing? Yeah. I know there's seasons of doubt or there's seasons where you're kind of going through difficulty. And I myself, I was cleaning a bookshelf and thought, that's when I was reading about Zen Buddhism. That's when I was reading about Nietzscheism and philosophy. As a younger man in my 20s, I was a believer, but I was still trying to like sort out you know, some of these things. And so I know there are seasons like that where you can do that. And I would say, if you're in a season like that, you know, get with believers, don't get with a bunch of doubters. Get with believers, not a bunch of doubters. Like, and certainly don't have an internet channel or an Instagram about your lack of faith. Like, come on. Like this is something to do in a quiet place of your soul and with like other Christ, you know, Christians who can actually shepherd your soul. But if you're making an internet name because of your doubt, I'm like, that's a bad plan. That's a really bad plan. And I, you know, wouldn't want to stand before Papa with that being the big plan of my life. Because you kind of put that message out there and lo and behold, what a surprise. You gather a bunch of other people like, I don't know what's true either. <laughs> I don't know what to hope in either. So, but you guys... You guys, I, I would hope, would have a growing sense like, I know the meaning of life. I know the reason for the hope that I have. I know that he's everybody's father, but I also know he's my father in a way he's not everybody's father. He's my father in a way that he's the father of all Christians. And this would be the other part as well, is that we get an identity from him so, so that even, in, even when evil takes a bite out of us, even when human and demonic decisions conspire against us, we see war-torn places on the planet where human evil and demonic evil are warring against flesh and blood. They are warring against and destroying people's hearts and homes and bodies. Uh, we have a, a father when we are connected with him that says, even when that's happening, I will work for your highest good. In everything that happens, I will work for your highest good. And this is a father who goes to bat for us, who says, you can trust me that, that I'm, gonna, I'm gonna work in these difficult situations. And then we know some of, some, some of these difficult situations, they end difficult as well. You know, there'll be a resurrection, but the person we were praying for to be healed ended up passing or the war that we ended up, we wanted to see ended, you know, went a year longer and took some more lives. So difficult stuff still happens to us. But when God's your father, this promise of scripture is this in Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, in all things that come your way, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. And that's you. You love him, you've been called according to his purpose in confidence that God is at work in every situation and circumcision that, uh, circumcision, circumstance. <laughs> in every circumcision too. It might feel like a circumcision. That was a, if I believed in Freudianism, that might be a Freudianism. But the last one as far as, as, far as father is concerned is that he, we have an inheritance. It's that beautiful idea that this is not our, the end of our lives. And I've mentioned this to you, but the whole idea of you only live once, complete fa fallacy, uh, completely inaccurate. Scripture says we live twice. That's the worldview, the theological foundation. Especially we say you only live once right before oftentimes we make an aggressive or rebellious or dumb decision. You only live once, you know, jumping off a cliff or whatever else. I'm like... But the teaching of scripture is you're gonna live twice. <laughs> and I'll tell you, that's a, it's an important foundation. There's lots of dumb stuff I don't do because I'm gonna live twice. Uh, I'm gonna give an account for my life before the Lord and so are you. And so this idea of YOLO, you only live once, like get, flush that baby, you live twice. Everybody you teach and preach to ought to know, you live twice, you live twice. So you get the idea, God loves everybody. He wants them to come home. 
but not everybody's received the right to call him dad. Not everybody has the worldview to be able to say, in everything he's working for my good, the promise that in everything he's working for my good, I know I have an inheritance of eternal life with him, uh, that, that I have this intimacy to even go through great times with him, for God didn't trust me with great wealth and prosperity, and I still stay true to him. And for in times of lack, when, and when there's, there's temptation, there's this diminishment, I still am able to stay true to him in, in the plenty and in the lack, like Paul said. So they, there's, there's part of the world that like, hey, I'm, God's my father. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, he is. And he's not. Would you like him to be your father totally? Would you like to have an inheritance? Would you like to have intimacy with him? Would you, would you like to know that in every single thing that comes your way, it is not just some mixture of human or demonic decisions or the, or, the, or the current of circumstances that happen, but actually God's at work for you? There's only one way that way, and that's to put your faith in Jesus Christ. That's to put your trust in Jesus Christ. And again, when I talk about that, I think that when it comes, it helps me to bring it home. And it's not just, I have faith in Jesus, like I believe you exist, but actually I've trusted you with my life. I trust, you, I trust you with what you've taught me about my sexuality. I trust you with what you've taught me about money, what you've taught me about government, what you've taught me about obedience, what you've taught me about wealth, what you've taught me about poverty. Like, I trust you with my life. That's faith. That's faith. Yes, belief in a sense, but actually, you got it all. You are the pearl of great price worth selling everything else to have you. You are the treasure hidden in the field that I sell everything else to buy the field that I might have the treasure. And there's a whole other sermon we could do that I could do in the future we could talk about. When some people, some prodigals want to come home and they want to bring all the prostitutes and pigs with them. <laughs> they want to talk God into being a pig farmer. Have you had sausage and bacon, Lord? It's delicious. Uh, they, uh, and like, oh no, that's, that's not the way prodigals come home. You don't, you don't get to bring the, the prostitutes and the pigs with you into the Father's house. He doesn't let go of what he knows to be good and just and holy yes. as we come home to him. Yes, that's right. Different message. <laughs> but again, so my hope is that you do have this deep realization that you are a privileged people. Yes. Grace has come. You were privileged to receive grace, to be called home. And you said yes to this, that you are actually children of the living God. Yes. You have the right to be called children of God. And that you, you have the keys of life, just like Christ did. That your friends and neighbors, your family members, they need to be able to like know how to come into this familiar relationship with God. And you know how to tell them to get there. Yeah. And the final kind of couple of minutes I want to have together is just a, as I was looking at this message as well, another thing came up that I thought was really helpful as well, is that the world holds out a different meaning of life, a different understanding of what, who they are, what, the, what their identity is, and what they're up to. And I was reading in Christianity Today that the author there, he uh, named Russell Moore, he was writing about his favorite books of 2023, and he, he suggested one called Self-Made, Creating Our Identities, From Da Vinci to the Kardashians. Yes. Kardashians is in the title. So, uh, and it's by an author named Tara Isabel Burton. And then he briefly writes about this. And I think it's a really profound idea that, that he communicates. I haven't read her book yet, uh, but I was able to read a smart person talking about her smart book. So that's the best I have for you at this particular point. Um, so he was reading about her book and he said, um, she interacts with this idea by another Christian thinker, powerful one called uh, Charles Taylor. And his claim that this, this current age, the secular age, is one of, quote, expressive individualism, which is actually true, right? That the idea that I, I can express my individualism, that's what we see on Instagram and Instagram stories and Facebook and all, or that's my truth, this is your truth. Like, hey, there's, there's just expressive individualism. This is what I choose to believe and, that the, and this is, the, I believe it in, and I, I want to broadcast it to everybody. And so all would be in agreement that he's probably right on track with saying there's an age of expressive individualism. But where this author, Tara Burton, disagrees with him slightly is this, is she says that um, Taylor pointed to a move from a religious worldview to a secular worldview. And that's the part where she's like, I don't think Americans, and just speak about Americans at this point, and you would know your own countries of origin more than, more than I did. I do. But I don't think Americans have given up their religion, but she makes a powerful point of what they've done to it instead. And Burton argues that we have not so much done away with a belief in the divine as we have relocated it. 
we have turned our backs on the idea of a creator God out there. And I would add our father who art in heaven and have instead placed God within us. More specifically within the numinous force of our own desires. That we have, that the world has had, in a sense, to keep their religion and this discovery of self and the discovery of God. They have ceased to think of God as our Father, who actually is calling them home, and has said, It's God is the God of my desires and my drives. No less religious, but locating religion in the wrong place. Burton argue, as, goes on to say, and this is, uh, this is actually Moore's words here, in a tale as old as Eden, the attempt at self-creation doesn't lead to deification, but dehumanization. Finally, the words of Burton, Tara Burton says this, in other words, this, what people are trying to figure out, it's the story people are asking and answering over and over again. They're asking once again the most fundamental questions human beings can ask. Who am I really and is it the story, and this book is the story of how one answer, and in her view, one became dominant, and it's a wrong answer, and it's this. Who are humans? I am whoever I want to be. And this is the great counterfeit to this, you are made in God's image. You've wandered from God. He has called you home, provided grace to come home. What does home look like? It looks like intimacy. It looks like a deeper identity and understanding, and it looks like inheritance in him all the days of our life in this life and in the next. And so this great, you and I, as we're out there in this battling in this world of truth, we have to kind of realize that, that one of the great idols of this day is this idea that no longer are people looking for the father, they're looking for themselves in themselves and calling it the divine. And that when we call people to like, hey, there's no divine thing in you that's going to save you or transform you. It's actually being reconciled to the Father who you are actually wired, made in his image and wired to know. And why don't you come home? It was as I was putting this message together, wondering again, like, Lord, are you in this? Haley just to, to proclaim, she's like, this is, the, this is the time when the Lord's bringing the prodigals home. And that this, in this month, that part of what we accomplished in the fast was this, she felt like it was a discerning of this. And then another beautiful thing happened that I think Chris will preach on more profoundly, but Chris just said he had a strength, he woke up from a dream and he heard the father singing over people who had once walked with him but weren't anymore. And that's when I thought, oh yeah, I'm supposed to preach this. <laughs> the father singing and he, Chris said, they, God wasn't mad at them. He wasn't moaning. He was just singing a song and I would read it of affection, of value, of love, just as we see in all these different ways that these folks who once walked with him would come home. And I would say to you, there's even, even in that group, there's some interesting, there's maybe two groups, maybe the prodigals who said, hey, I'm, 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 I no longer consider myself a Christian. They kind of need to come home. Like maybe Christianity has been misrepresented to them, but there's also people like, I haven't put a label on it. I'm just avoiding God. Like, oh, you need to come home. There's a lot of brothers and sisters who I, I believe will be in heaven with us, but they no longer are in a fellowship anywhere. They're not online in a fellowship. They're, not, they're, they're, they're kind of religious in name only, but they're not actually part of a body anywhere where there's any sort of give and take or truth telling or eldership or you know, any sort of like, this is right, this is wrong sort of deal. It's all, they're just on their own. And they also kind of need to come home to the Father's house and let the Father continue to, to shape them in this, beautiful body of Christ that he's given us to transform us. So would you go ahead and uh, bow your heads with me? And we're just going to take a few moments to pray for this revelation of God's fathering to hit those who are wandering. King Jesus, you've made a way for us to call God. Well, you said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. So Jesus, you made a way to the Father. We pray, King, that you would actually put powerfully put words and actions and practice in our heads and in our mouth. We pray, Jesus, that you would give us, you would equip us with, with categories for these folks who are spiritually open, but they're spiritually open to anything. And that we would be able to say, oh, there's actually a path of life that Jesus has given to us that's really, really plain, 
really clear, clear, and it is the path that I am on. And we pray that you might use this body of believers both locally and then around the world as well to see people come home, to call them to the deep connection of intimacy, inheritance, and identity that is theirs in Christ. Particularly, we would just say, um, Holy Spirit, let grace what is it old Spurgeon called you the hound of heaven? That you would just go after like a bloodhound. You would go after those who've wandered off. We would, you've also kind of said that you're the good shepherd who goes and seeks the lost. May that same thing be on us when we're looking around like where's so-and-so, where's so-and-so? May we hear your song of joy, your song of longing, your song of affection over them. That's a powerful idea that as you, you begin to think and meditate and wonder and pray for these, these brothers and sisters, these folks who have yet to put their faith in Jesus, that the song of God's affection, you would tap into that. It would be profound and real and deep and wide. So we ask, Papa, that, that we would be a people of faith who live in faith, move in faith, a people of identity, according to your great love for us, and your great grace for us. In the name of Jesus, yeah. amen. Yeah. Amen. Bless you guys. Great spending time with you. That was so good, Dan. Thanks, baby. <clears throat> wow, what a great message. Hey, we just want to make sure that after hearing Dan's message, that everyone in this room that the father's your father, that he's your father. He's not a father that's gonna leave you stuck where you're at. He's actually gonna bring full transformation to your life. So if you are hungry for that and you've never done that before, could you please just raise your hand right now? Be brave. We just wanna partner with you and finding who the father really is. Anybody. And online. If you need that in your life online, you can put that in the chat and we have people that will pray with you. Anybody in the room? So Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you that you are our Father. And that you've brought healing and wholeness. You've brought direction and life to us. And so we just want to thank you for today. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd like to invite the ministry team up. Yes, can you all stand, please? I haven't done this in a while. We have some beautiful people coming up here that want to pray for people. If you need healing in your body or prayer for anything, please come up. We've got some incredible students up here. including your son, Dan. I love it. And those of you, have a great day. If you were a 40 Winer fan, congratulations. Thank you, Marlene. I am grieving for the Packers because I really wanted the Packers to win. Hi, hi again. What an amazing, powerful service. Hey, why don't you um, go ahead and put in the chat was something that stood out to you from the service, a testimony, if God touched you, healed your body. We um, have heard some of you have already been putting them in the chat, but go ahead and put it again, put testimony. We'd love to hear, or something that Dan said, or something that God spoke to you in the service. We'd love to hear um, how you encountered the Lord this morning. And then as Marlene beautifully shared, if you would like to give your life to the Lord this morning, we would love for you to put in the chat, I need Jesus. We have a team that um, would absolutely love to pray with you um, and lead you in that process. So if that's you, if you're, I want to know God as my father. Uh, I want to give my life to him again. Go ahead and put, I need Jesus so our team can follow up. Yeah, I mean, if you couldn't have tell from start to finish, it's been such a theme around family and just uh, coming to the family of God, but also what God's doing within family. And uh, we're just even believing for, uh, uh, for you, our online community, that you would be experiencing breakthrough and a shift in family like never before. And just to let you know, as a leadership team, as a church, after coming out of the fast, we really do feel like God is gonna be invading whole families like never before, that even family members that you've been praying for to return to God would return to God this year. 
that it really would be a prodigal son season. And so, Father, we just thank you right now, even for just calling the lost home right now. Father, we thank you that uh, our prayers are powerful and effective because you are so powerful and effective. And Father, we just thank you for grace being released over them in Jesus' name. Yeah, we see a lot of you putting prayer requests in the chat and we're so thankful that you would invite us in to pray with you, believe with you for your family. Brian, I saw um, you saying, I wanna be healed of schizophrenia. We spend, if somebody else asked for uh, healing from depression, Rosanna. Uh, so if you need anything going on with your mental health, God, I thank you for divine health over mind, soul, spirit in the name of Jesus. Bodies, God, thank you for healing every part of us and aligning them with heaven in the name of Jesus. Again, if you have a testimony, share it. If you have a prayer request, share it. We want to pray with you. We shared um, at the beginning of the service, during the service, that we're coming into Randy Clark Week. We have such a focus yeah. on healing this week. And so uh, that is for everybody here and everybody online. Like God has moved so powerfully online in the realm of healing. Uh, even on Wednesday, we saw so many miracles online. And so we're believing for the Lord to continue to do that. And then I just want to encourage you just to, even for the rest of your day, or if it's at night, the next day, you can do whatever if it works out. But just carve out time to prioritize connection with family and just having fun and doing something together as a unit. And if you're like, man, I, my family's not connected. It's not that way. Just spend some time with God of just praying and just interceding and start yeah. declaring even the family that you want to see. And uh, we're just praying over you and believing that God is just going to do a great thing today. And just a reminder, just to have some fun, have some joy, have some good laughs. Uh, we're really excited after this. We're taking to our kiddos to a little play. Yes. At the Cascade Theater in Reading. So it's going to be really fun. They're really excited. And we might do in and out with the glory of God. I love that you're sharing this. Well, you just got to let them know. Our so place checks it's a plans. practical. I'm not just telling you, you know, go be with your family. I'm giving you a practical example of what you could do, right? So <laughs> if you're, uh, you know, if you have in and out in the United States around you, we bless you. If you're like, what is in and out? It is a glorious cheeseburger and french fry place. Steve, that are owned we're by believers. For them. It's owned by believers. You I'm just saying, the they beginning. even have scriptures are you hungry, under their my cups. Love? cups. Yes, we are hungry for the presence and glory of God. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. But we uh, we hope you have an amazing day. We're praying for you, uh, praying for a great time with family mm -hmm. connection, reconciliation, and for freedom and breakthrough. And just even continue praying and testing out your bodies throughout the day. If you notice any change, we went after healing and uh, during worship. So just to test out your bodies and any improvement, just put it in the chat of what percentage uh, yeah. better you're feeling and keep checking them throughout the day. And any improvement, just thank you, Jesus. I will say, I see, even as you're sharing, Steve, I saw a number of people in the chat commenting on uh, wanting prayer for their marriages or their children. Yeah. And so as we... Um, we have this, it's been this theme of family. We speak over your family. God is the God of restoration. God is the God of reconciliation. Um, it has been a theme. And the, what the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19.10, which means what he's done once, he's willing and able to do again. And so we are believing yeah. for restoration for you mm. and for your family. God is on family right now. Um, and I just declare a softening of hearts. Yeah and a changing of hearts in the name of Jesus. And those of you standing in faith for family members for healing as well, we speak over them divine health in Jesus' name. Yeah, and I just want to just release even uh, for those with marriage, just um, fun and excitement and adventure. And Father, I just even thank you just for the testimony of our own life, our marriage, our family. Father, I thank you that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And Father, I just thank you right now just for breakthrough and marriages and fun. In yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Bless you guys. We are so thankful that you would take the time to join us from all over the world. It means the world to us to have a global family that we get to connect with, um, do life with, and see God move through. So thank you for being a part of our church and our family. We bless you to have a fantastic week, and we can't wait to see you next week. And enjoy a double-double if you're going in and out. We'll see you there, <laughs> apparently. <laughs>